All right, so welcome to today's program with MSU Ravalli County Extension and founder of Rockin' Outdoors with Susan Bowman. Today's program is called Your Personal Nature Dose. So before we get started a little bit, I wanted to um, tell you a little bit about uh, how um, Susan and I came together to offer today's program. Uh, this is one of the educational programs of the 2020 Bike Walk Roll and Win. It's a health incentive program, and it was virtual before it was cool to be virtual, designed through MSU Extension in partnership with businesses and individuals in our community. This is our fourth annual year of doing the Bike Walk Roll and Win, and it was inspired by some walking mountains that were developed through our office starting about four years ago. So here in Ravalli County, we have three walking maps of our communities in Hamilton, Stevensville, and Darby. And those were selected because those are our, our official towns in the, in the community. So they have a little bit more infrastructure like sidewalks and um, places where the, the um, routes would be a little bit more normalized. So MSU Extension is a statewide educational outreach network that applies unbiased research-based university resources to practical needs identified by the people of Montana in our home communities. We have a network of extension agents and specialists, all faculty members of Montana State University, and every county has at least one extension agent. So here in Ravalli County, we have two extension agents. My coworker, Patrick Mankin, is the Agriculture and Natural Resources Extension Agent, and I am the Family and Consumer Science Extension Agent. And hopefully, once uh, things are list lifted with COVID, we'll be able to finish out our interviews for um, our third extension agent, that is our full-time 4-H agent. Um, so just this last year, we were able to add in another half-time FTE, so I'll be moving into a half-time position. So we also have Jennifer Morello, and she is our SNAP Ed Nutrition Educator, and she's 100% funded um, a grant fund, funds in our office. And, um, and if you ever stop by our office, which is located in Hamilton in the County Administrative Building, you will meet Jocelyn Snyder, our office administrative assistant. Um, and after taking this class, you'll be added to our listserv to learn about the other programs offered through Montana State University Extension. So like I said, this is our uh, one of the educational programs of our Bike Walk Roll and Win, and so let me tell you a little bit about it. Uh, businesses and individuals have graciously donated over 30 prizes to win, and it's free to participate. So the evidence-based program that we've been able to collect data over these years has had substantial impacts with participants sharing how it, um, how it helps intrinsically motivate them to move during inclement weather. Now in the summertime, you may think, well, it's easy to move. There's so much sunshine and there's so much to do. But I know in the last week, I've been having to set my calendar or set my alarm to make sure I get up and um, do my walk before it gets hot and muggy and gross where you just want to melt into the chair. So last year, we had participants report that 56% 50, of them um, saw an increase in their physical activity through, by participating in the bike walk roll and win. So what it is, is anytime you do physical activity, you can enter it for prizes. And so after this program, I'll be sending you out some information on that, um, on the bike walk roll and win and how you can log um, your activity. Um, you can go back in time since June 1 and you can log it up until August 31st. And so there are so many benefits of physical activity. Uh, some of it is um, it builds aerobic activity um, capacity since it's kind of like your ability to keep your heart and lungs and oxygens, um, getting the oxygen to your muscles. It lowers type 2 diabetes risk. It lowers blood pressure. It keeps our bones strong. It helps to maintain immune function, which is really important right now in our current environment. It improves breathing, increases energy, helps you sleep better decreases the risk of arthritis and dementia, as well as boosts memory and lowers anxiety. And so what better ways to get outside, especially to get your personal nature dose? So I'm gonna pass this time over to Susan, who's going to introduce herself and um, tell her a little bit about Rockin' It. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's great to see you here. I see some of the Rockin' Girls have joined us. I see Karen and Jessica and Janet. I hope you all are doing well. I really appreciate on a gorgeous Tuesday afternoon that you are choosing to spend a little time with us indoors because 
if you know me at all, you know my whole goal is to get you actually away from the computer and outdoors and enjoying uh, all the benefits of being outside. Um, but sometimes in training and skills, uh, there's a little computer time required. So hello, everybody. My name again is Susan Bowman, and I founded um, Rockin' It, which is women training women outdoor skills because I find that women learn differently um, than maybe men in an industry that typically is more focused on um, male activities. And so I have found that it's a great way to teach women and get them comfortable and confident in the outdoors um, by, by leading trainings that women lead. Um, our first and most um, um, most asked for class is called Rock and Reverses, and we teach women how to safely tow, hitch, and back up trailers. And I know just Janet's on here. She's taking that class, and so has Caitlin. And so that's one of my most favorite things to teach, and I see the biggest aha moments in women. It's really wonderful, and it's soon to be an online class as well. With COVID, um, we've all had to make some adjustments into how we get our information out there. Um, I also teach or I also lead um, amazing seasonal retreats where we go away for five days, spend as much time as nature, spend as much time transforming our mindset and really connecting with our soul, both um, in our day to day and and how we interact with nature. And those are pretty amazing, too. Unfortunately, our fall retreat has been canceled, but next year's 2021 retreats are all in the book. So if you're interested in those we can have a side conversation. So I really appreciated Caitlin um, asking me to join. And we've done several collaborations and they're always wonderful and um, a great spirit about them. Um, so the reason I put together this nature dose is I, I, I get this um, at a lot of my retreats that a lot of women think, or not a lot of women, but many people think when you talk about an outdoor girl, you're getting doors that if you don't strap on this hefty backpack full of all the right gear, and all the right equipment and have the best looking clothes <laughs> that you're not really an outdoor girl if you're not out hiking and climbing some big mountaintop or, or really pushing yourself out of your comfort zone that you're not an outdoor girl. And that's just so not true at all. I mean, I am, I am all for climbing mountains and I'm also all for just going sitting along the river's edge and watching the animals that appear. And so there's all breasts. And so I there's so many limitations to getting outdoors. I didn't want one of them to be thinking that you had to hike a big trail to even post your great photo or talk about um, something that you did outdoors or get the benefits of being outdoors. And I think we see if you at all are on social media, Facebook or Instagram, you see magical photos of people standing on the edge of rock cliffs and the gorgeous sunset behind them. And, and, and you feel like that's what you have to master when in reality, Getting outdoors and enjoying the benefits just goes back to kind of like that child playfulness that you have and what really got you as a child to just like be exuberantly excited to be outdoors. And even if it was just making, like I used to make mud pies, right, to feed my whole family when I was a kid. And that was one of my favorite things to do. Um, and it's, so it's really finding what your particular dose or your prescription um, is for getting outdoors. And so that's kind of what we're going to talk about here. Um, you don't need fancy equipment. You don't need a bunch of vacation days to get outside. It's really just about variety and finding out what gets you excited. And as Caitlin mentioned, I'm not going to go through a lot of it, but there is scientific proof and truth that going outside is good for us, whether it's five minutes or 20 minutes or three hours or a long extended weekend, or maybe even you're lucky to do like a two week excursion or something. That's pretty amazing. Um, it's restorative. It's health and wellness. It's boost mental focus. And especially when we've had COVID and everyone talks about staying home and staying indoors, right? Like we, I, people use the term like lockdown and, you know, stay home. And so in that bubble, people get into this mindset. It means like stay inside, shut the door, don't talk to people, like, you know, keep your distance. When in reality, it should we should be focusing on still getting outdoors as much as possible, but maybe changing the locale or the distance or how many people you go outdoors with. And I think being that, especially here in Montana, that some of that law that were stay at home happened in March when we still had some snow and things. It could it could instantly become pretty isolating if you're not somebody who goes out in the winter time. And um, when I talk about rocking it, our our um, 
conversations about Rocknet always involve um, being wild, being brave, and being capable. And so when you can put those strings together, the wild part being or the wildly part being about your passion or what most makes you your soul soar, your spirit be happy when you get outdoors and you can find rest and you can find peace and you can find creativity, that's the wildly part. And then there's the brave part of actually getting out there to do it, putting your steps forward, putting the action in place and doing it, whether it's solo or with a group, and then learning the skills to make that happen. Um, and I find as I talk to different people, there's a lot of barriers to getting outdoors. One, first and foremost, is a lot of women haven't had mentors or teachers to show them the ropes outdoors. You may have a child just kind of tagged behind along with somebody else, or maybe you didn't have any a parent or adult around you that showed you how to be in the outdoors and what to do in the outdoors. And so that's one of the biggest barriers that we have. The second biggest barrier I would say is we are all digital dominance. Our whole society, our culture, the way we do business, the way we talk to our friends, all the Zooms that we had to talk to our family, we've become very digital dominance. And so intentionally taking the time away from um, that, maybe not even photographing all of your outdoor events or outdoor activities, because then you're back to being reliant on some electronics. And before you know it, you're checking Facebook, and you're doing these other things to so get away from the digital. So some of the symptoms that you might have in order to create what this uh, prescription might be for you is you're maybe sluggish, you're kind of, your spirit's kind of flat, maybe you're tired, maybe you're overwhelmed, maybe you've joined some outdoor activities but they're really just, you're just doing a motion, like to do a check mark, to click it off that you're outdoors for 20 minutes, but they're still not actually really exciting you and giving you um, the experience of peace. And, you know, I grew up camping. I have three brothers and, and my mom and dad, and my mom did not love camping, but she went out with us every weekend camping, loaded up the camper for four kids. We, all we had was a cab over camper on our truck for the longest time. We all squished into that. And at, partly she probably took us because she just wanted us out of her hair. And when we're out in nature, we're running and we're playing and we're swimming and we're doing all sorts of things. But it was later in life that I found out she didn't really love it. It wasn't always that peaceful for her. She had to pack it all up and then she's got all these kids that are dirty and she had all the food to worry about. And then if somebody got hurt and um, so I don't know, sadly, if she ever took the time just to enjoy nature the way she could. Unfortunately, she's passed away. So I can't ask her that question now that I'm so focused on being in the outdoors. But it's really about what your passion is and what you're excited about. Get your spirit soaring, get you excited um, to do the things. And so I really think your passion or your drive, or if you can find something you're really interested in the outdoors, will override the digital dominance we have and will override the fact that you may not have had a mentor or an adult to um, help you with that because you will then have the drive to go learn the skills and the capabilities that you need to do that. So to become brave, to go for it. So um, when you're thinking about what your dose of nature might be, I think again, mentioned going back to kind of like childlike, like what was, what excited you when you were younger to get outdoors. And sometimes that excitement on all levels of life, but Sometimes when getting outdoors, if you have parents or adults in your life that aren't comfortable getting outdoors, that special spark in you may not have been nurtured along the way because it may be something that people around you weren't comfortable with. So it might be journaling. It might be just wandering in the woods. It might be you love to swim in the rivers, but maybe you had adult parents that weren't comfortable with swimming. And so it's really going, you really might have to look back a little bit about what it was as a child that got you excited, whether it was nurtured or not. And maybe if it was nurtured, now you can take it to the next level or you can, maybe you forgot about it because life got busy, you got kids, you got all sorts of things going on and you're like, oh yeah, I used to love to challenge myself to swim across the lake. That was one of my things as a kid is I wanted to swim across Lake Como from side, not the link, but side to side, not from the boat dock to the waterfalls, but side to side. Because we used to have a lot of camps at the, um, what's the at woods woods cabin and so from woods cabin i want to be able to swim across um como and as a high schooler i finally did get i swam all the way across como but i couldn't get back so somebody had i had to hike around the back now as an adult that i moved back to montana not only have i swam across it and back i swam across it and back under a full moon and one year i was actually able to walk from woods bay across the lake because the water was so low 
So I've got to also walk across the shores from Como. So it's kind of interesting how it plays out. But think about those young things that used to inspire you and get you excited. And who cares if nobody else thinks it's cool to swim across Lake Como or to swim across whatever the next big lake is that I pick? Who really cares if nobody thinks that's cool? If you think it's cool and you get out of there and you're jumping for joy and everyone thinks you're silly, it really just doesn't matter. So again, this is a chance to get you to think beyond just strapping on a backpack and going on some trail, you see everybody posting about Kootenai Falls or, or or whatever it is in your area, because I'm not sure everybody on is from, or that will be listening later is from a Valley County. Um, what is it that makes you exciting? Maybe you don't want to do any trails unless there has to be a waterfall on it. So maybe that's your thing. And the other trails are just boring and that's okay for you, but you're getting outdoors and you're getting exercise. So um, with that, you kind of have to think about if we're going to come up with a prescription we have to think about what your dosing might be. And by dosing, I mean something gets you fully excited. We talked about that. Your passion is something that's fully excited. Um, how much pockets of... So you see all these people hiking into the waterfalls. Well, there might be three-hour treks or even four- or five-hour treks when you think about the time to drive there, to get out, get your backpack, hike in, have lunch, hike out, get back home. And so... That also does not define what an outdoor person is. It could be 20 minutes sitting on your front porch meditating, or it could be 20 minutes in your garden, or it could be you have an hour lunch and you're going to eat your lunch in 15 minutes. So every day you can take a 45 minute walk around a new block from your, you know, something in town around where you work. So it can be just about anything. There's many times during the summer, I just go grab a Subway sandwich and my dog and we go to the river and I eat my sandwich as soon as I get there. And then I wear clothing that and a bra and panties that have quick dry material. And I have a spot. I jump in the river, no tube or anything. I float down just on my body. Maple's floating with me or she runs the shoreline. And then I get out. And by the time I walk back to my car, I'm pretty much dried off and I head back of course, I have a home office. I don't have to go into an office, so I don't have to look great. Um, but I head back in, and then I get busy to work again. So sometimes that's all the amount of sunshine and outdoor I get. But boy, those uh, 15 minutes in the water make all the difference for my day. So think I'm about those. Going, things. Oh, I was going to say, for those of you who are wondering what Maple is, it is a dog. So she oh, jumps Maple. in with her dog. <laughs> <laughs> Just for those who may not know. <laughs> It's not a maple donut bar, but maple. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's funny. So think about your pockets of time. Think about the resources you have currently. That doesn't mean it's forever like that. So the gear, the equipment, and the financial that you have. Me going down to the river doesn't cost me anything except for a couple dollars in gas to get there. If I buy a Subway sandwich, it does, but I could also bring my own sandwich. Think about that. Again, you don't have to have the best gear or equipment. You just have to have a few pieces. And of course, if you're doing backcountry or dangerous stuff or swimming there's there or kayaking, there are specific legal things you have to take with you and, um, and survival type things. But that's a whole nother discussion. Um, about the skills that you have. Maybe you're not comfortable yet swimming across because you're not in that great a shape. So maybe you need to do some smaller stretches first. So it's just thinking about... Something that fully excites you, pockets of time, resources, skills, and then you need to decide which activities are really important for you to do solo and which ones are really important for you to do as a group because there is a whole different experience getting outdoors in both of those. And so the ones, just pat yourself on the back, get your brave hat on, make those happen. The group ones, something that you want to do with someone else, either find, you know, this is now your opportunity to make it intense one or other two people to do it with or you find a group to do it with. Um, all right. So we talked a little bit about the symptoms. We talked a little bit about how you might set up your own dose of what you need and how, uh, how to think of all of those different things. And so now we're ready to write sort of a prescription. And this is what I'm going to go through 10 different ideas. I actually, I'm writing an ebook about all of this and, um, I have like 35 different ideas. There's, there's a gazillion out there, but I just picked 10 that I thought might inspire you to really think about what excited you as a kid and what might fit your current lifestyle. Knowing that the number one thing in your prescription is that it brings you connection, it gets you grounded, 
and your spirit soars when you're doing this activity or when you accomplish the activity. Because sometimes the activities are pushing our brave muscles. And so there might be a nervous anxiety. I know I've had some people come on my retreats or come to my rock and reverse class and they come with a ball of nerves. They try to talk themselves out of coming. Sometimes they call me and I can talk them into, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Um, and their spirit really soars is once they actually show up and they actually start the activity. But lots of times we can have nerves before and that's okay too, because that's pushing us into a place that we need to go. So I'm going to go through 10 ideas. We have about 10 minutes. So this should be about perfect. I'll probably get through them fast and then we can, I think, have some time to chat um, if you guys have any questions. I already mentioned my favorite thing to do, and it might give you some ideas if you're short on time, is what I call shoreline excursions. So whether or it's a river or it's a pond or it's a little stream, sometimes maybe even a puddle, if it's been raining a lot, um, they're shoreline excursions. And it's essentially just going down and sitting along the water's edge or slowly walking along the water's edge. And if you're really quiet, you'll start to see animals that you never would have noticed before. Um, you can do some rock counting, which is one of the favorite things I do. I have certain places I go where I know the stream after high water has thrown a bunch of rocks against root balls and stuff, and I can plumage through there. And if I'm having a really stressful day, my overwhelm just goes from 100 to 10 in about two minutes of sitting along the shoreline. One of it's the water moving is a really good um, ion energizer for you, but also looking at rocks and stuff. It gets gets me detailed on something creative, something that makes my soul happy and not maybe the argument I just had with a vendor on a product or something. So I call those shoreline excursions. Simple, easy, don't need a lot of equipment. Depending on where you're at, you might need bear spray or something, but you don't need a lot of equipment. Easy, easy to find. I give lots of ideas on how to find those shoreline excursions. Um, hill climb. So my number two is to think about hill climbs. So um, instead of maybe always going to the gym or maybe sitting instead of watching TV after work, you just think, you know, position yourself with three or four hill climbs in areas around you. If you've got hills or mountains and know the distance it takes to drive there, maybe make sure they're all within a 10 minute drive. And your whole goal besides being outside is to climb that hill as fast as you can. And every time you go, you try to make it faster and faster. And so hill climbs are very energizing. They're very, you feel like you've accomplished a goal and there's something you can add on and challenge yourself with every time. And I have three different places I do hill climbs, um, two within a 10 minute drive. One, I can walk out the door and I guess I have a fourth one, um, but it's, it's a little bit more of a drive when I'm training or when I just need to burst out some energy. And I love doing just plain hill climbs. They're pretty open spaces that um, aren't, and I'm not at a lot of risk doing these hill climbs. Number three is to really think about maybe an animal connection. So maybe there's some animal that you've wanted to study as a kid or something you loved or you're really curious about. And so maybe you spend a year just um, doing bird counts. There's all kinds of societies out there that do bird counts. Or there's the Wolverine Protection Society that goes out and studies wolverines and you bring bait balls out to certain locations and you check trail cams and stuff. And, and that can be more with a group. And so maybe for a year you do all excursions that involve wolverines or beavers. Maybe you're down at the river with beavers. I think animal connects can be super exciting. And um, just the discovery and the exploring and the learning can be really exciting. Number four would be what we call forest bathing. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the term forest bathing. And what it really is, is kind of like getting into a bathtub with water, but you're you're getting into the forest, you take your shoes off, you walk barefooted, you feel all the feels with your feet, the pine needles, or maybe the maple leaves that are fallen, or you're going over jagged rocks, but it really is taking off your shoes. You could take off more if you want, depending on where you're at and what the laws are.
I am unsure if Susan is still with us. If you could put in the chat, if you can hear Susan, please do that or just tell us what's going on. This happened on another program, not with Susan, but with somebody else and they were seeing it and I was not. Okay, I can't see her or, or her picture and I did text her to see if she responded and oh it looks like her camera just went out so if you want to hang tight she'll be joining us back and i'm not sure how much more of her program was going to take place but we can always re-record and send it out to you all and it looks like susan is back on she is muted and she's joining us unmute all right I can, oh I can, there you are. Okay. I know. I don't know if it was just me because it's happened before, but. My laptop was totally charged before I started this, um, but this um, web program must take a lot of energy because it zapped it in however many, however long we were talking. So I'm back. Sorry, I apologize for that. Might be new time for an update computer. I don't know, laptop here. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. Yay, she's back. I love cheerleaders, that's awesome. I probably should be yeah. asking more questions as we're going along, because I think Caitlin has the chat room open. So if you have any yep. any questions, jump in for sure. I love uh, talking to you guys and having conversations. So not as pretty of a background here, but this is where we're gonna finish up. So I was talking about forest bathing, correct? Did you guys hear anything I was talking about journaling or did I get cut out before then? Forest bathing. Okay, so number four was forest bathing. Thank you. And um, again, it's walking barefoot, but more than walking barefoot, it's using all of your senses. So it's touching leaves, of course, know which leaves not to touch. It's really breathing in and smelling the smells. It's stopping long enough to listen and hear everything. So forest bathing is just using all of your senses, kind of like when you get into a bathtub you know, if it's warm, like all of your nerves kind of start to tingle and stuff. So that's force bathing is like that. And when you're really having a time in your life that you need to settle down, forest bathing is pretty amazing. And you don't have to go way back into the forest to forest bathe. You just have to go in a little ways and sit there. And um, one thing of warning, though, if you are quiet for long periods of time, wildlife may not know you're sitting there. So just make sure you you know, normally when we're hiking, we're making lots of noise, so wildlife knows we're around. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, journaling, journaling. So when I say journaling, everyone's like, "Well, I don't know how to draw. I don't know how to paint. I don't know how to journal, or I, I don't never know what to write." But journaling can come um, so many different ways. Journaling could be, it could just be a scrapbook for you. So every time you go out into the outdoors, you pick up three or four things and then somehow you fit them into a scrapbook and maybe you write a little note about where you went, what the weather was like, what kind of mood you were in, time of day, and then you have those five objects in there. And so maybe there's no writing at all and no drawing. So um, journaling can come in any different kind of format, but I think it's wonderful to record where you've been and what you've done and how it may have affected you. I love to do watercolor journaling, but I've had to do a lot of training to get to the place where I'm comfortable with that. And so if you've always wanted to do watercolors, you've always wanted to do pencil drawing, or, or maybe you want a spark and a journal entry, um, journaling is a really fun way to do that. You can do it on the trail or at the river's edge or in the middle of the, on a kayak in the middle of the lake. If you want, it, journaling can come in all different forms. So don't let journaling scare you that you don't know what to write. Um, another one I called, I, so many, if you're an avid reader, I really suggest that one time a week, maybe a couple of times to take your book to a trail or to an, a beach. When I say beach, it means a river, any edge. It could be a river, it could be a lake, it could be the ocean, if you're lucky to live by the ocean. Um, but take an activity that you absolutely love doing, like reading or stitching or something like that, and do it outdoors somewhere and be intentional with that time. Um, it just adds another element to it. Um, sometimes I like to just go to a meadow and sit and read if I can get away. Um, let's see. Number seven is a, called a morning ritual. 
So, and this is, can kind of be, you could journal during your morning ritual. You could force bathe by taking your shoes off, but it's really, um, and I, the way I do it, and you can set up your own morning ritual based on your routine is I check the, um, when the sunrise is for where I live the morning before. And then I try to get outdoors. Even I even do this in the winter. I just bundle up. And I'm so warm when I sleep that if I do this right when I wake up, I don't get that cold outside because my body's still so warm. Um, I try to get a 10 minutes before sunrise and I go outside for 20 minutes. And so what and I, I sit on the porch on the east side so I see the sun coming up. And when you go from that stark quietness to the birds start singing and the sky starting to lighten up and you see shadows and then you start to tell what things are and then the birds get more exciting and then before you're hearing cars and everything, it really wakes up your senses and it really gives you an appreciation for the beautiful day that you've been given for the gift of waking up. And when your energy can rise the way the world rises, um, it, it, really, um, it really is a different, it's a way different energy than just jumping into the shower right when you wake up. It's completely different. And when I do my retreats, we do mindfulness treks every single morning. And one of my favorite ones is, um, is I do 20 minutes. So in that 20 minutes, we, the first 10 minutes, we're walking towards the sunrise. And we think about, um, we think about in that 10 minutes, 10 different things that we can receive. So it's all about receiving, receiving the sound of the birds, receiving the energy of the sun, receiving the day, receiving what's ahead of us. And so I have a little timer. And so I say, minute, minute, minute. And so we have to come up with 10 things as we're walking towards the sunrise and it's coming up of things we're willing to receive that day and totally acknowledge. And then after 10 minutes, we turn around and we walk back to usually our lodge or wherever we're staying. And we come up with 10 things that we're going to let go of that day. So it might be frustration, it might be something that didn't happen, it might be whatever your 10 things you need to let go of. And by the time you get back to the lodge, your day is just ready, set to go. You didn't have to write anything, you didn't have to draw anything, you didn't have to be quiet because you're walking and you're moving. And that's, I have I have a gazillion morning, or morning mindfulness practice that we do. That's just one of them. So I love my morning ritual. All right, we're running out of this. Okay, eight, so number eight is called outdoor cooking. So we don't think of that, but if you could set some sort of activity where once a week you cooked in the outdoors, it could be your barbecue, it could be on a fire pit if you have a fire pit, whatever it is, do outdoor cooking and make it intentional and have the whole meal be out there. If you can't go camping, if you can't get away, just be outside cooking and maybe you make it a challenge because it's fun to add a challenge to some of these um, maybe it's a challenge that you use some odd ingredient you got at the grocery store that week. Like you're at the grocery store, you see odd, you grab it, and you're like, I'm going to figure out how to cook this outdoors on an open flame. I, for me, that's very fun and exciting. Maybe as a cook, that's something that would be exciting for you. Number nine, another idea is mindfulness. And I call it the wild calm. And so it really is using nature to nurture your body. And there's a ton of practices already out there about mindfulness Again, it doesn't have to be hours outdoors. It can be five minutes. It can be 20 minutes, whatever that might be. Um, but if you can find one or two practices, mindfulness practices in nature that totally excite you, because some might totally bore you and you might fall asleep. But if you can find a couple that excite you and then you just have some of those off days or maybe you have total exuberant days that you want to share with nature, the mindfulness practices are really wonderful. And then the last one I'm going to talk about, um, again, I came up with over 30 of different ones. I just grabbed a few that were maybe to get you thinking is called star power. And if you know me at all, which I know some of you do, I love the full moon and I, there's not a single full moon that I'm not outside doing something under the full moon. I don't always share everything I do because, because I get a lot of people who then do this and I can't they follow and do the same thing, and then I, I do, can't have my space to do it. Um, but even last night, I was down at the river shore when the moon came up, a mindfulness practice. And then we did a swim. It was pretty fun. But, um, but related to that is what I call star power. And so if you've ever, I mean, if you're in Montana, you're lucky to be able to walk out your door and look up and see the vastness of the world and the sky and the universe and the galaxy and all those amazing terms. And it really starts to put your life in perspective. And so if that's of interest to you and you've always been a person who's looking up at the sky 
Maybe you want to focus for a year on star power and learn all about galaxies and stars and identifying them and when's the best way to see the Milky Way and when can you see the Northern Lights and and all those amazing things that go on. If you're in my out, Rock and Outdoor Sisterhood group on Facebook, I try to highlight the different things, at least in the Northern Hemisphere that are going on, either comets, like the comet was magical. I stayed up almost every night to go see it. So that might be a little bit of OCD, but I did love it. Um, laying in the grass, staring at the sky is amazing. So um, I can hear you, but you've disappeared. Okay, you can still hear me good. Okay, I don't know why I've disappeared, but. Maybe that's my day, how it's going to be. Anyways, laying in the grass, you know, put a towel out, just go in your backyard, put a blanket, lay in the grass, stare at the sky, drive your truck somewhere. If you have an open bed truck, throw down a blanket, just lay in your truck and look at the stars. Um, all very wonderful, all very amazing, and just helps you connect with the world and everything that's going on. And it's really, again, about being grounded connecting with something and just watching your spirit soar and play and have a good time. And if you want to pull on a backpack and hike some long trails, do that in the mix of all that too. Cause many of these things you can do also when you're on a trail hike. So it's up to you now to, to know what, what dose most excites you, what resources you have, what time you have. So you're writing out your prescription of what you're going to actually do. And I'm going to challenge you to pick something of interest and maybe it's something you're already doing and that's wonderful but to be maybe a little more intentional about it and challenge you to write a prescription for yourself because it's your specific it's what makes you excited doesn't matter what anybody else thinks if you just want to go on trail and smell wildflowers the whole way and take hours to go less than a mile then do that do whatever you want to do and um, I'm going to challenge you to come up with something you can do weekly so it'd be like if maybe I was writing a prescription for I don't know what it would be, but sometimes the prescriptions from the doctor will be like something you have to do every day or something you have to do weekly or something you have to do long term, like give something up or something. So I want you to write a prescription for something you can do weekly and something you can do one times a month that just totally excites you and makes you excited to get outdoors. And you still have to sometimes pull on your brave muscle to do it or find a friend to do it with. Um, but it is it, it will so improve your health. It will so improve your outlook on life. It will so help you push through what is going on in the world right now and your view of it and get back to who you are and what your role is in this world and, and connect with that. And so, um, again, you may not have all the resources right now, but I bet you have enough resources to get started on something that really excites you. Now, if you've always wanted to ocean kayak, around the tip of southern New Zealand, the southern island, which I want to do. That's a that's a much bigger excursion and it will happen, but I am already planning for that in, you know, working out with my shoulder muscles and stuff to make sure I can kayak for two weeks in a row. Um, and what the plane airfare is going to be and all that sort of thing. So you can have the bigger fun goals too. But if I can challenge you just to do something every week, even if it's getting up in the morning and watching the sunrise, I really think um, I talked about this before, but any adventure is epic doesn't have to be hiking eight miles with a 30 pound backpack and watching a waterfall. Doing your morning excursions once a week is also epic. So I don't know if there, I, I love all of your comments. I'm glad some of you like some of those ideas. That's great. Um, so I also wanted to mention that, cause we're going a little bit over here partly cause I disappeared. Um, I do have the Rock and Outdoor Sisterhood group on Facebook where we talk about a lot of things and people share their ideas and I share what's going on um, with that. And I'm just getting ready to start a um, 21 day live. So I'm gonna go live for 21 days and it's, the um, topic is called Still Wild. Like we're still wild, even though we've been asked to stay at home, even though we've been asked all these parameters are put around us, masks and everything. There's still a wildness and then there's still a freedom that we need and we can still um, we can still go there. So that's what the 21 day live is going to be very inspiring and motivational. And also I need to put here. I don't know if I can. I'm going to paste the um, doesn't look like it pasted. I was going to paste the link that people could register to get the replay and the show notes. Um, it is in the um, it is in the event on Facebook, but I'll try to get it posted in here as well. And then was asked, where can we learn more about other outdoor nature 
nature dose ideas from you. So I have an ebook coming out. It's called Doctor's Orders, Fresh Air Prescriptions. And so in that ebook is a list of all the different ideas and not it not only the ideas, but the mindset around them, specific tips to make it happen, the gear that you might need, and how to overcome if you have a limitation to doing that, what some of the mindset and that sort of things might be for that. So that will be coming out too. And if you have any other questions, you can send me an email or you can um, PM me in Facebook. So my challenge to you is, are you brave enough to follow the doctor's orders, which is to get outdoors and find things that you really love and enjoy and that inspire you and make your spirits soar? So is there any other questions or comments or no? I know no, we were thank you so much, Susan. That's fine that we went over. It's totally fine. We're still all here. Um, so we'll be you'll be sending that out that nature's dose. I'm sorry for my own personal use. I'd love to have some inspiration and and uh, you already inspired me to get outdoors. Good. Yes, I know when we did our um, that December. So sometimes in the winter months, I'll hold a a challenge on Facebook to get people outdoors. And I know that's when you started doing full moon, you started walking in the moon in the evenings in December uh -huh. when it's freezing, but it was amazing, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that's when I, I think I shared with you in December, I didn't real I realized how I don't get outside and usually I go for my noon walk out that outdoors. In December, I think you're just so busy that you, the days just go by so fast. And I started walking right. at night, so. Yeah. yeah, it's a great way to end the night. And your body really loves being out in the dark at night. It helps it all like calm down. So do so many of us like flip off the computer or flip off a light switch and then we jump into bed. And again, if you would have an evening routine where you sat outside in the dark for 20 minutes, um, that also helps your body really know what to do next. So um, another beautiful thing. Well, a huge thank you. Thank you to you for uh, teaching today's program. And oh, Susan just posted uh, the the video replay and the show notes um, when you register there. So thank you so much for everyone who joined us today. Uh, I'll also be sending you an email so that you can learn a little bit more about the 2020 Bike Walk Roll and Win. Uh, we have a challenge this week. I was telling Susan about it, our challenge this week. Uh, and uh, like a special drawing for one of the prizes. And this week's challenge is drink more water. And uh, so if you set your own personal goal, whatever it is, whether it's increasing your water intake or switching from a sugary drink to a high calorie water, uh, high calorie drink to water, eat more fruits and vegetables um, with high water content, whatever it is, you set your own challenge and you conquer your own goal. So uh, I will share that later um, once we get the program, the video recording from WebEx, and I'll send that out to you. And uh, in the next few weeks, we'll be doing a challenge of um, outdoor nature dose um, inspired by Susan. So thank you for coming today. And hopefully you can join us again, either with Rockin', Rockin It with Susan or with MSU Extension. Thanks for being here. Thank you, everybody. Bye. <laughs>